Former U.S. Representative Corrine Brown sentenced to five years in prison. Crime born out of entitlement and greed, judge says. U.S. District Judge Timothy Corrigan sentenced XU.S. Representative Corrine Brown on Monday to five years in federal prison for fraud and tax crimes that include raising about $800,000 for a sham charity, a remarkable defrocking of the once powerful and garrulous Jacksonville Democrat who inspired devotion and vitriol in equal parts throughout her decades in public office. Brown's longtime chief of staff, Romney Simmons, was sentenced to 48 months in prison, and the fake charity's founder, One Door for Education President Carla Wiley, was sentenced to 21 months. The trio fractured under the weight of the prolonged federal investigation and trial. Wiley and Simmons were once lovers, and Brown has said she loved Simmons like a son. In court, they were all on different sides. Brown's defense lawyer argued at trial the aging congresswoman was the unwitting victim of her charming and manipulative chief of staff. Corrigan largely rejected that defense and rebuked the actions and motives of the three defendants. All three, he said, were knowing participants in a shameless conspiracy to bilk wealthy donors out of money by using a fake charity that purported to help needy kids. This was a crime born out of entitlement and greed committed to ensure a lifestyle that was beyond their means. Corrigan said. Ms. Brown was personally responsible for all or nearly all of the $833,000 that flowed into One Door because, without her clout, donors would not have given to One Door. Even if she did not know how all the money was being used, there was never any intent that the bulk of the money would be used for charitable purposes. Corrigan said Brown, 71, would report to prison no earlier than January 8th to an as yet undetermined prison, but allowed her to remain free until then. The Bureau of Prisons will decide the date she must surrender to authorities. Brown's attorney, James Smith of Orlando, argued for a probation-only sentence and said Brown would appeal Corrigan's decision. An appeal may not keep the 12-term congresswoman from going behind bars, however. Federal rules say Brown should begin serving her time while the appeal is pending unless the judge finds the defense is raising substantial issues that are likely to result in a new trial or a sentence shorter than the time he'll need to decide the appeal. Under federal sentencing rules, Brown will have to complete 85% of her sentence before being eligible for release. A federal report in March said that the roughly 4,100 convicts released after serving fraud sentences completed about 88% of their sentences. Corrigan made it clear that Brown's decision to take the stand in her own defense and to occasionally speak out publicly to criticize the prosecutors was at best unhelpful to her cause. He decided against finding that she committed perjury on the stand though he said her testimony was at times hedging, noncommittal, off-topic and evasive. That decision slightly reduced the guidelines Corrigan used to sentence her. Corrigan criticized as beyond the pale some of the remarks Brown made to the media during the run-up to her trial, especially her reprehensible statement implying that the FBI might have been able to prevent the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando if it wasn't preoccupied with investigating her. The judge's strongest language was saved to describe Brown's fraud and tax crimes. Corrigan was especially taken aback by an instance in which Brown claimed she had donated money to one door so she could write off more charitable contributions on her tax forms. Brazen barely describes it, he said. Brown showed no visible reaction as she was sentenced. The courtroom was packed with many of her supporters, including former Mayor Alvin Brown. City Council members Joyce Morgan and Reggie Brown and Bishop Rudolph McKissick Sr., the pastor emeritus at Bethel Baptist Church. The often outspoken Brown climbed into the back seat of a black Mercedes without saying a word, a handful of people cheering her as the car pulled onto Monroe Street. 